we really do. Um, especially the judges. Especially the judges. Judge, judge um, Crawford, my friend for a long time, and Judge Haley, that we've never met, but God bless you, she was so early. Judge Myra, all these judges, and they are on this side of the bench, you all. On this side, we don't have to look at them and try to come on. Best behavior, you know. So we're glad to see that they are out in the community when they are not knocking on doors and telling us what they're going to do when we come before them. However, let's stay on this side, okay? Let's just stay on this side and keep them where they're supposed to be. Um, you are going to hear, and you see a lot of here, everybody looking at their program. Every one of these persons on your program will be able to, you, you're going to hear from them later on today. But as we introduce and give recognition to all of the others, I want all of you to help me recognize our former and our newly elected president of the the chapter NAACP, and that is our Mrs. Francis Gilchrist. So, Tarko, would you come and help me as we stand up to the Gilchrist, as we pay tribute to our newly elected president? Get out and help you. Yeah, I know Tyrone is no good for that. <laughs> Give her a hand, you all. Give her a hand. <laughs> this is what I want my flowers. And how about you? I don't want them when I'm right here. I don't need them right there. So let's just give her her flowers today. Martin Luther King. Such a historic time. And I believe that this day should go down in your book of memory, I call it your memoirs, that this is an awesome, awesome day for the day of flesh. It's the day that the oldest organization, I do believe, in the United States has set aside a day that we would have our inaugural ball election. That's what it's called, our inaugural election. And I'll tell you, what an awesome time to be part of such an event. What an awesome time to be being sworn in today to serve humankind, because that's what it's all about. That's what the NAACP is all about. Serving humankind. That, that's, that's all it is. That's all it is. Very little. Very little. If any. I don't think it's much. But for you to have given of yourself to do this today is a great day. And to all of the members, the newly elected members, and the former members, because we couldn't be where we are without the former members of the NAACP, that chapter. We just couldn't. Y'all need to set the hand for that. A lifetime members of, of the NAACP, and if you're not, you need to think about it. Think about it. We are going to do some great work in this chapter in the city of Flint. At this time, Officer Young will come, and he's from the Mount Morris Township Police, and he's going to come and present to us our colors. Officer Young.
without you. Lord, please remember us. Guide us in the path of righteousness. We need you right now, Lord. Lord, please, I'm asking that you crown the head of our president with more wisdom, more knowledge, more patience as she continues to take the helm and move forward, Lord. Guide her as you would have her to lead. We cannot do it without you, Lord. We know you're in control, and we just want to say thank you. Lord, bless each and every one that is here today, that is an elected official, that is an unelected official, whoever, Lord, let us work together. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
that it belongs to the Lord. And if we could just keep that in mind when we are going through things in life, that the back is not yours, it belongs to the Lord. And just give it him. He's standing there waiting, waiting for us to give it to him. And that's all he wants us to do is give it to him and let him, let him work it out. God bless you, sister. Greetings to all of the Flint Chapter NAACP members this evening. We're so glad to see your faces. And we just want to say on the behalf of this chapter in the city, <coughs> under the leadership of our very esteemed re-elected president, Madam Chairperson, Francis Gilchrist. Amen. Amen. We want you to know that those of you that have served faithfully and have done a wonderful job and you have carried the water, you have carried the baton, when some of us young folks was at the mall shopping for shoes, first of all, we want you to know that we thank you and may the love of God always be with you wherever you go. The old brother said, take the Lord along with you because you're going to need it. And we're so grateful for your commitment, your dedication, and your love for justice and fairness and what is right. Because to stand up in these days and time in which we live, it's not easy yes, to stand up for what is right. right. But we want you to know that we love you. For those that are outgoing, please continue to fight the good fight of faith yes. and lay hold on eternal life. Yes, and to those of us that are coming in, as I heard Sister Kirkland say, in her comments and to Dr. Jones I heard him say in his prayer and I'm reminded of a scripture by the Apostle Paul as he told his son Timothy in the gospel he said do the work of an evangelist and make full proof of thy ministry You know, no one can tie God's hands. God is so great. And then Nehemiah said, as I talked to Sister Poplar today, as we had a little church earlier this morning, we began to talk. And I shared with her what God had put in my heart. Madam Chairperson Gilchrist, as I sat there drinking my coffee, the word work is what came into my spirit. I know the Holy Ghost gave it to me. I didn't know it then, but I sure know it now. And then we look back in the Old Testament with the great prophet Nehemiah. Dr. Jones, Pastor Harris, and Nehemiah said the people had a mind to work. So if you don't want to get dirty, if you don't want to get sweaty, if you don't want to be faithful, you must be able to share your gifts and your ability with God's people all over this city, all over this state. Yes, the Flint chapter of the NAACP, we're getting ready to roll up our sleeves. We're getting ready to take off our coat. We're getting ready to step out of our gears and take our clothes off and put the whole arm of God on. And we're going to stand with you, Madam Chairperson. 
you have those of us that love you. And I want to say this. And I know Pastor Harris will back me up. The election is over. Did you hear what I said? It's over. Now it's time for us to go to work. May the Lord ever bless you. May he keep you. I'm ready to go to work. Put your hands together and give God some glory. Hello, everybody. Hello. My name is J. Cole Price. Um, I perform poetry. My stage name, some of you who may remember me, is uh, Prodigy. And before I perform, I just want to say thank you to everybody for the invitation, for allowing me to be here. Um, just, just to the entire NAACP chapter. And special congratulations to Miss Pastor Tanya Bailey, who, yeah. who I love dearly. And so this poem, I wrote for this occasion, it doesn't have a name because I just finished it Tuesday, but bless the Lord. So <laughs> this poem is just really for kind of a bridging the gap poem, really more so for my generation. Well, you're here in a second, so. Um. Go to work. <laughs> we, won't be a we won't be silent movements. A stagnant society contingent on jury and verdict know this. We will not allow our lifelines to be outlined in the laws you flatline us with. Yeah. Won't allow these chalk outlines to become soliloquies of us chasing freedom. These streets won't read our obituaries. These sidewalks will not know our names. These stop signs will not hold any more balloons for us. These mothers have had enough crying tears for us. These hashtags will not become our final resting place. Oh God, this race, this race isn't finished. We see the finish line in the distance, but you threaten to shoot us if we bother to reach for it. Mm. Mighty funny how you try to steer the drive out of us, but ain't we still here? Try to strangle the freedom from our lips, but aren't we still purpose? Aren't we still legacy? Aren't we still history personified? My, how the footsteps they left for us to step in become the ones we dwell in. No, we won't end. We won't become a vain effort of unity, of leaders, of preachers, of teachers, teachers, constantly teaching and reminding you that we are not history's table scraps. A pile of your mishaps and misuse, your, your, your rarely chewed but overused, a pile of our backbones bagged up on your mantle as conversational pieces. No, matter of fact, our backbones will not become the steps and ladders you use to get ahead of us with. Yeah. My generation will not be known as a village of lost souls plastered on t-shirts of bright colored hoodies chasing street lights. No, we better than that. Yeah. We are progression. We are the answer to prayers. We are our great grandparents' daydreams. We are revolution. Matter of fact, forget Django. We are freedom unchained. We are change unchained. We are the sound of loose shackles. This is how we speak to you. We are the wings for every caged bird. Who we are the wind underneath the wings of every caged bird who couldn't kill any longer. Whose feathers became the dream catchers of our next breath. We won't be frugal station. We won't be Flint. We won't be Troy Davis. We won't be Detroit. We will not be Ferguson. We will not constantly remind you that we cannot breathe. We will exhale without your permission. We won't be silent. Won't be seen as forgotten. Won't be misused. But above all, we will not be ignored. Thank you, Pastor Bailey, for finding and bringing this to us. He said, uh, hold up, brother. There, Pastor Bailey is right there. He's looking. I'll see how long you live. <laughs> I wasn't going to let this pass. He said we won't be ignored. Matter of fact, did you hear that? He said we won't be ignored. 
NAACP will not be ignored in Genesee County, in the state of Michigan. We will not be ignored. I like that. Pastor said, not that I'm on my best behavior. <laughs> All right, I don't want to get chest tight. <laughs> that, that's all right. Y'all know how y'all preachers do. Y'all just like when you do wrong. <laughs> I know it. I was never able to call this man's name. Never. So I'm just going to say it again. Kim John Jay or something like that. Kim John Jay. For you, and I was always say, they done it. Okay. That's all right. I'm glad to be called anywhere. <laughs> and I am so grateful to be with you today. Uh, this is an auspicious occasion. Anytime we talk about leadership, in this town, we have to talk about the NAACP. Yeah. And I'm reminded of a brief story that I have to share with you uh, from my youth. Uh, back in the days, back in Trenton, New Jersey, where I grew up, we all knew that black America had to rise. And the local NAACP chapter had a way of enlisting the youth to do the work in the community. And one of the ways that we did that was we volunteered to uh, help with the uh, older folks' homes and cleaning their homes and cutting their grass and whatnot. And I was a little concerned because I was cutting into my profits. <laughs> Just volunteering for nothing stuff. <laughs> was starting to cut into my, my lawn cutting business. <laughs> and so uh, a friend of my father said, well, we, we'll have you do that, but while you're uh, going around the neighborhood, I'm going to give you a little paper wrap. And he gave me the Negro History, Negro Weekly History newspaper to sell. It's a local newspaper that came up the East Coast. I don't know where else it was sold. But I do know that I had me a little paper wrap. Now, it wasn't much money. It certainly wasn't as good to me as cutting lawns. But I did get an education. Because along the way, as I delivered those newspapers, I read about the exploits. I read about the work that the NAACP was doing. I read about the history. And by the time I got to the seventh grade, I had become an activist. So active, in fact, that they threw my butt out of school. <laughs> but it was for a good reason. I wasn't acting up. I just demanded of the principal when they put out a little brochure that they spell Negro with a capital N. Amen. That everywhere else it was spelled with a capital N except in our school. Mm -hmm. And I said, we are people who are proud. Amen. And we deserve to have a capital N just like the NAACP is capitalized. Wow. And we want a capital N in this school. Wow. Well, I got sent home for being managed, they called it. <laughs> I've been managed ever since. <laughs> and in 1965, the NACP awarded me $100. Now, what was the $100 for? Well, I had been a uh, participant in a program to help me get ready for college, to encourage me to go to college. And I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to go to college, but I knew that I didn't want to do anything else. Everything else that I saw people doing was trouble, and or Vietnam, and I knew I didn't want either one of those things. And so I seriously considered looking at college as a possibility, but I had this trip that I had won, but I couldn't afford to go. I was embarrassed because I was being sent overseas to England and Wales as one of the emissaries, and one of the uh, sponsors was the NAACP. But you see, I didn't have a coat. I was worried because the raggedy little coat that I wore going back and forth to school in the neighborhood, that was one thing, but I was going to a foreign country and I wanted a new coat. I felt embarrassed. 
and I didn't have enough money. My parent, my mom didn't have enough money, and I needed a new coat. Somehow the word got back to the NAACP, and that hundred dollars bought me one of the finest coats you have ever seen. <laughs> inside and covered outside with the NACP early on in my life. So I always knew where the strength and the leadership was coming from. Mm -hmm. So when I was asked today to give some remarks, he said, well, what do you want to talk about other than myself? I wanted to talk about some things that would help us to put into perspective what this leadership thing, this NACP, means or should mean to all of us. And I jotted down a few things to help us remember. And I had to remember the admonishment that I was given with my big mouth, keep it short. So I'm going to try to do that with that long introduction. I wrote down that NACP, all the officers, all the committee people, all the volunteers, all the members, we have to stand up to be the might of right. We need to step up, step in front, to lead and behind to push. To be the light of revelation, of truth and hope. To be the shining light, to reveal the wrongs, point out the right and light the way. We have to be both anxious and patient. Anxious to continue this long fight because as much has been accomplished, there's still much to be done. So we have to have the understanding that we've got to keep vigilant, be anxious, but have the patience to understand that progress comes slowly sometimes. We have to engage and enrage. We have to tell everybody this is important. We must do this work. We do not have a choice. Not to do it is not an option. We have to bubble up, get it inside of us, get moving. Because enrage is not a nasty, uh, negative thing. It is the passion that we bring to the work. So to energize, to empower, to provide structure and the voice to the work that needs to be done. To help carry the load, but to share it so that no one person, no one group, no one officer carries it alone. We are all carrying it together, and then we can do the work. To continue, to persist, over a century already, and still needed, and still viable, we must remember that this is the long road. This is not a sprint. This is a long race. Through it all, we must understand to withstand and to stand always in all ways. Believe me, to withstand what we've come through, we have to understand what that power we're fighting against is all about. Through it all, we must be, just simply be, by understanding our history, what we've come from, and embracing the, the future that we are going to. And as has been alluded to already, it takes work, and work we must do. Folks, we need you. We need the NACP, we need the leadership, and we need the best. And so far as I know, we've got the best. Amen. Amen. Aldridge was up speaking 
And he was telling us we were here to sign up to be members of NAACP. And he was telling us how much work needed to be done. And I said to my girlfriend, I don't know that I want to be a part of this if it, if it got to do all this work. <laughs> so she said, we ain't going to be doing it all. It's just we're going to be doing part of it. And it seemed as if Reverend Aldrich heard me. And I was sitting down there at that time. And <laughs> he says, we all going to have a sign mix. I said, oh, OK, I can do that. I can do that. And I appreciate what you said, work, because this is what this chapter is all about, work. work. We have work to do. And we are here to get the work done. Amen. Amen. Now, it's all about people in place. We have the judges all here to do the installation <coughs> of the officers and I'm just going to ask the judges to come and they know who they're supposed to install. And I'm going to do it with Judge William Crawford and Judge Vicki Haley. Amen. And I, I know that uh, Judge Haley is doing the executive committee and um, Judge William Crawford is doing the officers. And if there are others, however you are want to do this. Members, please come forward. Executive committee members, if you want to put the line up right here, President, right across the front. Line up right in front of Raise your right hand. I state your name. Solemnly swear or affirm. Solemnly swear or affirm. To discharge to the best of my ability. To discharge to the best of my ability. The responsibilities of office. The responsibilities of office. As executive committee. As executive committee. Of the Flint branch of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Of the Flint branch of the National Association of the Flint Branch of the In accordance with its constitution and bylaws. In accordance with its constitution and bylaws. And the decisions of its governing bodies. And the decisions of its governing bodies. I dedicate myself anew to its principles. I dedicate myself anew to its principles. Of equality and justice under law. Of equality and justice under law. I shall try always to keep the goals of the NAACP. I shall try always to keep the goals of the NAACP. Above any pure, purely personal or individual interest. Above any purely personal or individual interest. That might hinder the attainment of those goals. That might hinder the attainment of those goals. I ask continued help of Almighty God. I ask continued help of Almighty God. In keeping this pledge. In keeping this pledge. Congratulations.
I know in the program it says Judge Crawford will be um, swearing in the officers, um, but I've been blessed um, with the, um, the honor and the privilege of being able to swear in my sister, Jolena Sanders. I solemnly swear or affirm to discharge to the best of my ability to discharge to the best of my ability the responsibilities of Office's Treasurer, the responsibility of Office of Treasurer of the Flint Branch of the National Association for the Advancement of the Colored People. Of the Flint Branch of the National Advancement of Colored People. In accordance with this Constitution, in accordance with this Constitution, and bylaws, and bylaws. And the decisions of its governing body. The decision of its governing body. I dedicate myself anew. I dedicate myself anew to its principles of equality and justice under law. To its principles of equality and justice under law. I shall try always to keep the goals. I shall try always to keep the goals of the NAACP. The goals of the NAACP. Above any pure, above any purely personal, and above any purely personal or individual interest. That might hinder the attainment of those goals. That might hinder the attainment of those goals. I ask continued help. I ask continued help of Almighty God, Almighty God. in keeping this pledge. In keeping this pledge. Congratulations. New robes. I've had this one for 15 years. <laughs> okay. Ready? Raise your right hand. You scroll. Both of you. Ready? Alright. 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 I come where they tell me to come. Alright. Raise your right hand. I, your name, do solemnly swear to discharge to the best of my ability the responsibilities of the office of the flood branch of the National Association for the Advancement of Color in accordance with its constitution and bylaws and the decisions of its governing bodies. I dedicate myself anew to its principles of equality and justice under law. I shall, I shall try always to keep the goals of the NAACP about any purely personal or individual interest that might hinder the attainment of those goals. I ask continued help of Almighty God in keeping this point. principles of equality and justice 
other one. I shall try always to keep the goals of the NAACP about any purely personal or individual interest about that might hinder the attainment of those goals. I ask continued help of Almighty God in keeping this plan. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. And now we will have Pastor Tanya Bailey. Governing bodies. And the decisions of its governing bodies. 
I dedicate myself anew. I dedicate myself anew. To its principles of equality and justice under law. To its principles of equality and justice under the law. I shall try always. I shall try always. To keep the goals of the NAACP. To keep the goals of the NAACP. Above any purely personal or individual interest. Above any personal or individual that might hinder the attainment of those goals. That might hinder the attainment of those goals. I ask continued help. I ask continued help. Well, Almighty God, I'm keeping this place. God bless you. Yeah. because of an oath that they've taken by the president and father president. So give yourself one more hand and join in with the two Forerunner, as all of you know, 
of the NAACP. And it says, the battle we wage is not for ourselves alone, but for all true Americans. And then there was another quotation that got to me that is the mission statement of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. And it says, the mission of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People is to ensure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of rights of all persons and to eliminate racial hatred and racial discrimination. Now, many of you who know me uh, or have heard of me know me as a minister of the gospel or pastor of Mount Vernon Baptist Church or president of the Great Lakes District Congress. Uh, but for many of you, you may not recognize that I am uh, a historian, uh, having edited and published for many years the collector's edition African American History Calendar, which I happen to have a few of today. Yeah. And I have also had the uh, honor of teaching history of African American religion and also a black church and civil rights movement at the University of Michigan Flint. Now I hold these honors by the grace of God, but they uh, have also made me very familiar with the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. I know that this organization is built on the collective courage of thousands of people of all races, nationalities, and uh, faiths, united in one, uh, in, 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 united together uh, for, to work for equality. I also know that the NAACP, from its beginning, is one of those um, gee, organizations like the Urban League that uh, receive a lot of its primary support from the black church. Yeah. And uh, that uh, many times uh, that the NAACP met in the churches after the benediction. Mm -hmm. One of my mentors and professors, Dr. Gay Rod Wilmore, said that uh, the NAACP met in many churches immediately after the benediction was pronounced. And it, it, it used to be said, and it was a truism, that in many, by many in the community, that the black church was the NAACP on its knees. Amen. Many people recognize that those who started this great movement were both black and white. Yes. In fact, in the matter is, the majority of people who started the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People were indeed white. Yes. And, uh, Started, it was all started and brought about, and of course, there's, I'm just kind of skipping, I'm going, I'm going to get there real quick. That, that Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois yeah. uh, was part of that first Niagara movement and later a part of the leadership of the National Advancement, uh, National Association for Advancement of Colored People. And uh, of course, Dr. Du Bois was the first uh, PhD in America, African American PhD, uh, graduate from Harvard. And, uh, and, uh, and along with that, in the first uh, century of the 21st, uh, excuse me, decade of the 20th century, there was a senator by the name of Ben Pitchfork Tiller of South Carolina, uh, and he got enraged with President Theodore Roosevelt. and. Uh, and he was able to stand up in the, uh, in the, in the United States Senate and say uh, that after Booker T. Washington had visited with uh, President uh, Theodore Roosevelt, say that we might have to kill about a thousand niggas just so they can get back to where they're supposed to be. Uh, I paraphrase because I can't see that right now. But in 1909, also social status many African Americans still assigned to the lowest ladder of 
uh, American life. Uh, the military had to be first uh, to be desegregated, and then schools later. And uh, uh, there was a fellow by the name of Paul Bringer of the University of Virginia, Virginia who said that, uh, that, the Negro, that the nature of the Negro's education should be that of uh, Sunday school. Uh, because their life was to serve uh, uh, in the fine source of cheap labor. Uh, during those same, that same era, there's a man by the name of Alonzo Herman, a black man in Atlanta, Georgia, who owned three barber shops in that uh, great city. And the shop that happened to be on Peach Street. He had a chandelier and uh, shoe shine men and several barbers. And they all cut the hair of people who were not African American. Mm -hmm. And that barber shop was known from Richmond all the way down to Mobile mm -hmm. as the finest barber shop in the South. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, then, and then finally, in that same, uh, that same Alonzo Herndon, Parlayed the money that he made as a barber, shoe shine, into the, the seed money that became Atlanta life insurance. Uh, so the question comes how are we doing now? How well uh, are we living out the mission of the NAACP politically? We've come from the point where we're not just visiting the White House, we live in the White House. Yeah. 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 Having uh, had President Barack Obama elected educationally, our historically black colleges and universities, the 106 of them, are struggling yeah. for survival. Yeah. Yet on the other side, we have 4.3 million African Americans with four year college degrees. Uh, we have come from one PhD under Dr. Du Bois to a time now that we have over 136,000 African Americans with P real PhD. <laughs> Socially, we are language. From the bottom, of we are bottom of the unemployment line. We have the greatest uh, percentage of people in prison and our crimes against one another uh, are equal to those of George Zimmerman or those in Ferguson, Missouri. The question comes again, how well are we doing? all the way there. Now, I got some notes and I'm not going to read them all. <clears throat> but I do have some announcements and I must get them in. If I don't get them in, I'm going to be in big trouble. Now that you've all been sworn in, now that you know that you're going to work, your first assignment is naked. Saturday, I do believe that's January the 24th, next Saturday. Write it down. Put it in your phone. You got to put everything in your phone. Okay. You got to lose it. You will be going to, and by the way, that's a mandatory training for all of the newly elected officers. Am I correct, Mr. Okay, Amen. you're going to last it. <clears throat> And it's 426 Clare Street, Lansing, Michigan, and it's at the UAW 652. Now, I know somebody else have all of that, but what you do need to put down is the contact number, which is 810-742-8622. You need to put that down, um, and I'm sure there's another number that they can call, and if not, that's the number that you need. The secretary must have it. 
One more time, 742-8622. And that's for your training, and it's at 11 a.m. for all new officers. Again, glad to shop. Um, well, Pastor Yaba already did his membership, so um, Christine, where the other membership? If anybody here would like to become a member of the NAACP, Sister Christine, our other members, will be over in the fellowship hall after we leave here with um, applications if you would like to become a member. So don't forget, it's $30, $500 for a lifetime, right? Not all that? $750 now. See? See? See what Karen Daddy was talking about, it was $500. But anyway, Pastor Harris, the president is telling me this is your time. So, whatever it is, you know. I learned to kind of read this. I don't see anybody out there that's not a part of the body of Christ unless you have not accepted Christ. But if you are a believer, you are a part of the body of Christ. Come on, somebody. Everyone in the body of Christ is significant and is needed. I have some organs that I can live without, or some parts of my body that I can live without. I can live without my hand. I can live without my arm. I cannot live without my brain and without my lungs or without my heart. Talk to me, somebody. Someone would say that the, the toes are so insignificant, I can live without them. But if I didn't have toes, I wouldn't be walking like this. I'd be walking like this. My toes help me to have the balance that I need. Talk to me somebody. And so I charge you officers and you leaders of this Flint branch of the NAACP. Let us remember, let us never forget, number one, our August history so so eloquently brought forth by Brother Tim Dodge and Pastor Yarba. Let's give them some love. <laughs> what did I used to do? Colossians 317 said, do it as unto the Lord. Yes. Right. Have I got a witness? Yes. So the treasurer is not the president, but the treasurer is important. You talk about financial records and statements. The secretary is not the president, but the secretary is important. We need to keep membership roles, and we need to have scheduling of information meetings. We need to have board meetings. We need to have filing of notes and filing of forms. We need our vice presidents. Hello, somebody. We need our vice presidents to support the president. If President Gilchrist becomes incapacitated, we thank God that we have vice presidents that can step into her shoes and the will to continue to move forward and who are gifted to do these things. And we need you, Sister President. We need you because you are the one who presides over meetings and events make sure that everything runs smoothly and the organization maintains a good image and you're charged with overseeing all other member activities. You are the public face of this organization. God forbid that you ever would bring shame to it. You're the contact person. Every question anyone in the community has ought to walk through you and then you distribute to those who work under you and assist you to make sure that everything is done decently and in order. Well, we've heard a lot about what has happened in the past, but I charge you brothers and sisters with this question. Let's write the next chapter. Let's write the next chapter. 
It's good to reflect upon what's happened in the past, but it's not what we did last year, it's what we're going to do today and tomorrow and next year. Hello, somebody. And I close with this. The good news is we don't have to do it in our own strength. And the foundational emphasis of this movement was a spiritual movement. Not only was it fought on the grassroots level, but it was fought in the heavenlies, spiritual warfare. And there's still some strongholds out there that need to be pulled down. And we can't do it. The only key is we got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Jesus came walking on the water one day and Peter looked out and saw him and said, Master, if it's you, beg me to come out. And Jesus said, all right, come on out. And Peter was walking on the water as long as he had his eyes on Jesus. But you know, when you're following Jesus, the devil was still trying to intimidate you. The devil can talk loud. And the winds can begin to blow. And the lightning can begin to flash. And, and Peter was, he was geeked by that. And, and he took his eyes off Jesus. And when he did that, he began to sink. But I want to tell you, the Flint branch of the NACP, because of these resourceful, gifted, talented, sane members that we have in our leadership, yes. is going to walk on the water. Because they're not going to get the big head and begin to think that I'm so smart and I'm so talented and I'm so gifted that remember all my success I have to ascribe to the Lord and to the upbuilding of his kingdom and the betterment of the society in which we live. Let's keep it in mind. Let's keep it in mind. Let's not forget, leaders. Let's not forget. I charge you to keep these objectives that were given to us in the NACP Constitution. Let's work to, together to ensure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of all citizens. Let's work together to achieve the equality of rights and eliminate racial prejudice among the citizens of the United States. Let's work together to remove all barriers of racial discrimination through democratic processes. Let's work together. I charge you to seek enactment and enforcement of federal, state, and local laws securing civil rights. Let's work together our charter to inform the public of the adverse effects of racial discrimination and to seek its elimination. Let's work together. Let's work together. I charge you. We can do it. It's already done in Jesus' name. Now put your hands together. Get down. Thank you. You all been waiting for it, and now you have it. We're going to have our remarks from our newly elected president, President Francis Gilchrist. Give her a hand as you Giving praises to our Heavenly Father, because he is worthy to be praised. To the angel of this house, in his absence, Dr. Lewis Randall. To all of the esteemed clergy, it's so good to see you, but I'll be seeing you again, baby. And you can help us in our advocacy. Oh, yes. To the mistress of ceremony, please give her a great time. <laughs> your distinguished holding of this podium. Sometimes I know it's not easy. But you handle your business, girl. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. To all the program participants, I thank you. And to these judges, can you stand up again? <laughs> I think this was a tremendous thing to swear us into service. And I know you guys have big, busy loads and you continue to do the work of this organization. And I also want to say we appreciate your membership because all of you are members of this organization. You believe in the mission. And that's the most important thing, you believe in the mission. I thank you again for being here to swear us into service. To the newly elected officers, 
and executive committee members, can you stand up? I thank you for accepting the call, the clarion call, to do the work of this great association. I appreciate you. I look forward to working with you. And, and I think the community is also. God bless you, and we'll see each other. At that, I know at that training, because we all have to go to that training. To the, uh, and I thank you. And I'd like your families to stand up, because your families are so important, because you're going to be missing in action. Because they get ready to work, y'all. So we join them in this advocacy fight. We can't do it alone. We need your families there. So when, they, when they're missing for dinner or whatever, you know where they are. They're in this fight. That poem. You got to do that again. <laughs> It was awesome. I really appreciate that. Being a part of the program. To Ms. Callaway, you never cease to amaze me. Now I praise God because he is the author of every perfect gift. I am truly humbled to again be in the service of his people. The mission of the NAACP, Pastor gave it to us, Pastor Harris gave it to us, Pastor Yara gave it to us, yes, yes. is to ensure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of rights of all persons, not just some, all persons, and to eliminate racial hatred and racial discrimination. Now I'm going to ask you, have we made it there yet? So when I look at the statistics, economic re recovery is not coming to our neighborhoods. The dis distribution of funds are not equitable. Our mission is not complete. When I look at the statistics of the jobless rates in our urban areas where black and brown folk are here, are they? Our mission is not complete. When I look at the infant mortality rate yes. among our blacks, and the research shows us it's about discrimination. It's not about social economics where you live. It's about discrimination. Our mission is not complete. When I see our public school system across this country feel to capacity with black and brown students, and their state governments are cutting the resources that they need to have a quality education. When I look at the, the dropout rate and the expulsion rate in our urban areas, I know our mission is not complete. When I look at the school to prison pipeline, when governments or powers that be decide how many prisons to build based on the number of people that are black boys that are in the third grade. Yes. I know our mission is not complete. When I look at black males being killed across this country and no one has been held accountable, yes. I know our mission is not complete. Now none of these disparities have jumped over Flint. Don't think we're by ourselves. We got some issues other than these issues. That's right. Here in the city of Flint, democracy has been snatched out of our hands. We have EFMs, and every EFM is in a minority community. So that lets me know that our mission is not complete. I see exorbitant water rates on the citizens for water they can't drink, can't take a bath in, and we have no say so in it. See, I know our mission is not complete. When I see racial profile on the north end of Flint, I know our mission 
is not complete. Now I'm gonna ask you again, has the NACP's mission been realized? No. See, that's why when I tell folks that say to me the NACP is irrelevant, I tell them it's a lot. Till stuff is right, all the way from the White House to the house that I live in on Davis. I know the NAACP is still relevant. Oh, yeah. Now you executive committee members, I am encouraged. And I'm gonna say I'm encouraged because I see you as warriors. I submit that the NAACP Flint branch is alive and well. I know we'll persevere when we speak truth to power. We will persevere because God Almighty orders our steps. Mm -hmm. Micah 6 and 8 says in the NET version, He has told you, O oh man, what is good and what the Lord really wants from you. He wants you to promote justice, to be faithful and to live obediently before your God. Our people need us to promote justice, to be faithful, and let us not be weary in well-doing. For in season, we shall reap if we faint not. Again, I thank you. I'm not long-winded, but I do know this. God has, I have a soft spot in my heart for anybody that wants to do the work of the association because there's so many people out there need us to be advocates. They need us to empower them. They need us. And if we're not going to answer the clarion call, we don't need to take offices. God bless you. I thank everyone that participated. I hope I haven't forgotten anyone. But the Lord will order our steps as we go forward. And we are going forward. Yes. God bless everyone. Thank you. remember that it was at the church where it all got started. Um, when I look around and see all these pastors and ministers, uh, my next job is to get some food. That's where I'm going. Okay, and I'm looking and I'm looking. God bless you. Shall we pray? Father God in heaven, we come just to say thank you. Thank you for the food. Thank yes. you for the fellowship. Yes. Thank you for these friends and families. Dear Lord, I'm asking that you keep us and bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Mississippi Poor Boy version is on tomorrow morning at Christ's Fellowship.